Users of Wonderware System Platform, also known as Orchestra, can integrate the multitude of different process hardware available using an OPC or SuiteLink connection to a data server with drivers available for those different hardware types. OmniServer is a user configurable OPC, DA, and UA, as well as Wonderware SuiteLink server, and allows users to create custom protocols using device manufacturer's documentation, which details the communications protocol, all without having to write custom code. This video will walk through how to connect Wonderware System Platform via OPC DA to the OmniServer Universal Server for integrating non-standard devices such as barcode scanners, scales, RFID systems, sensors, and more. Now for this demo, I already have a topic defined in OmniServer that will simulate device data to prove our OPC connection with Wonderware is working correctly and showing changing data. So as you can see in my OmniServer configuration here, if I go to the Topics section, uh, my topic is named Sim Device, and if I open the properties, you'll see that I'm using the client underscore test protocol together with the random device to simulate device data. These two components are installed with OmniServer, and anyone can use this combination of protocol and device for testing to simulate live data for your client connections. Now, if I go ahead and close out of this, go to my protocol section, and open the client test protocol. Now, if I go to the item list, you'll see... Uh, what items are available for this protocol. For this demo, I'm going to be connecting to the integer read item specifically. So I'll go ahead and close out of this and minimize my OmniServer. So with OmniServer set up to simulate the data I need, I can move on to the system platform configuration. So I'm going to open my IDE. Now in my IDE, I've already connected to the Galaxy that I'm interested in using to connect to OmniServer. Now you can refer to your Wonderware documentation for instructions on how to create a new system platform Galaxy. Now for this demo, you can see I have my deployment view open in my Galaxy. So the first step in configuring a new project begins with the System Objects folder in the Template Toolbox. So if I'm going to expand the System, system folder here, and uh, to start with, I need an instance of the Win Platform Template Objects. I'm going to drag that down to my Galaxy, and you'll see it creates an instance called Win Platform underscore zero zero one. Now, in this demo, I'm going to maintain the default instance names for all the objects created, but you can name these instances appropriately as needed for your specific project. Now, the next object I need is an instance of the App Engine template, so I'm going to go back to my template toolbox. Now, I'm going to drag this to the Unassigned Host folder, and you'll see it creates my instance there. And the final system object in my template toolbox that I need to configure is an, an instance of the area object. So I'm going to grab an instance, I'm going to grab that, drag it down to unassigned host to create an instance of that. Now at this point, point I'm ready to start assigning these system objects. First I'm going to assign my app engine to my win platform by dragging that down there. And then I can assign my area to my, uh, to my app engine instance. So I'm going to grab that and assign it to the app engine. Now, there's no configuration of these object instances actually required for this demo. Now that our system object instances are created and in place, we can go on and configure our OPC DI object, or device integration object, as it's also called. So, I just need to go back up to my template toolbox and expand device integration. You see there are a couple different options here. The one I'm interested in is the OPC client template. Now, uh, it's used for making an OPC DA client connection to an underlying OPC DA server which for this particular demonstration is going to be our Omni server that I just discussed earlier. Uh, so I'm just going to grab an instance of that, drag it down in my deployment view under the unassigned host folder. It's going to create an instance of that for me. Next, I need to configure the pro properties of that OPC DI object. So I'm going to double click on that to open the properties. Now there are two properties of interest in the general section that you'll want to be aware of. The first property is the server node property. Now that's just the machine where OmniServer is installed. Since my OmniServer is installed locally on the same node as my Galaxy, I can actually just leave this blank. If you were making a remote connection via DCOM, you would use that to browse the network for the remote machine, or you could manually enter the, the DNS machine name. Uh, but we're going to leave that blank for a local connection. Then I can move on to the server name field, and that's going to be the actual OPC server. So that's going to be OmniServer in this instance. If I click my drop down, you'll see there's a whole list of installed OPC DA servers on this particular machine. The one I'm interested in is SWToolbox.OmniServer, 
which is the OPC prog ID for Omni server. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and I can now proceed on to the scan group section. If I click the scan group section, um, system platform following the OPC DA specification does require that at least one scan group be configured. Now you may also have heard a scan group referred to as an OPC group. Um, if all of your items will need the same update interval, update interval is one of the settings of a scan group, uh, you would only need one scan group um, unless you wanted to group your items in a certain way. Now the, the group update the scan group update interval determines how often requests are made by uh, an OPC server to underlying devices. This is sometimes referred to as a pull rate, a scan rate, or an update rate. Um, and if different items need different update intervals, you would configure um, a scan group for each required update interval and assign the specific items to those groups based on the update rate you need for those. Um, now, for the purposes of this example, we're only going to be configuring the one scan group because we're only going to be accessing one item. Now, to add a new scan group, I just need to click this blue button here above the available scan group section. And uh, this now you'll see this, I have a cursor. This allows me to give the new scan group a meaningful name and go on to define the rate at which the system platform will request updates for the items in this scan group. So I'm just going to call my scan group sim data. And I'm just going to use the default update interval of 250 milliseconds, which was auto-populated, as you can see here. And uh, now that I have my scan group configured, you'll see there's also a scan mode. Uh, a couple different options available there. Um, we always recommend going with the active on-demand option um, if you're unsure. Um, so uh, you'll want to consult your Wonderware documentation further to see what the differences actually are between those scan modes. But... Um, for the purposes of this demo, we're going to stick with the default of Active On Demand. Uh, now, now that the scan group's configured, I'm going to select it, and I can now browse OmniServer's tag database for items to add uh, down in the Associated Attributes section. Now, just be aware that for larger projects, you may also want to import tags from a CSV file. Uh, the easiest method for doing that is to first add an item via browsing, as I'm going to do in just a moment, and then you can then you can actually export a CSV file containing that item for the scan group, and then you can use that CSV file as a template uh, to make sure you're using the proper columns and things of that nature and creating your creating your CSV file. Um, and then you can import that back in once you've got your items added. That tends to work particularly well for larger projects. Now, as I mentioned, this demo is going to focus on adding a tag using OPC browsing, though. So first, as you see, I've got my I've got my scan group highlighted. Now I just need to go down here to the associated attributes. I need to add an associated attribute for that scan group. And uh, now, as you can see, I'm given an option of defining a name for this attribute, or I could skip this step, in which case the full address, including the topic and tag name from OmniServer, would be used once I select an item during browsing. Now I'm just going to go ahead and name my attribute integer read, since that's the item I'm going to be accessing. And you see currently my item reference for that attribute is undefined. So I'm going to click in the item reference section. You'll see I have an ellipsis button all the way to the right here. So I need to click on that. And that opens my OPC item browser. So inside my OPC item browser, um, the branch that I'm interested in is the SIM device branch, as you can see here. Um, and that just that essentially matches the name of the topic that I showed you earlier that's configured in OmniServer. So if I highlight that branch, you'll see on my right-hand pane here, it shows me all of my available items for that topic, which matches up with that item list that I showed you earlier in the protocol. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my integer read item and click OK. And you'll see that populates my item reference accordingly. Uh, you'll see the item reference is topic name dot item name, and that's standard syntax for accessing an item via OPC and OmniServer. Now, since I'm only adding the one item for this demonstration, I'm actually finished configuring my OPC client DI object and just need to save the changes made and close the configuration screen. I'm going to click to do that. I'm going to click the save icon here in the top right. And then I need to check in the changes that I just made. So I'm going to skip making a comment and just click OK to finish checking that back in. And now that my OPC client device integration object instance has been configured, it needs to be assigned. 
So I need to assign this under my app engine instance. I'm going to drag that down to app engine and get that assigned. And now the final object that I need to configure in order to connect to that tag and Omni server is an instance of the analog device application template. So back up in my template toolbox, I'm going to go expand the application folder. And I'll find my analog device. You'll see there's an analog or discrete. Um, for a discrete, since I'm not accessing a Boolean tag, I'm actually going to access an analog value or an integer. That would be an integer or floating point, uh, an analog value of some nature. Uh, so I need an instance of the dollar sign analog device template. So I'm going to drag that down to unassigned host. And then I need to configure the properties of this instance. So I'm going to double click on that to open the properties. And I just need to go to my IO section specifically. And here I need to assign an item from the scan the item that I just from the scan group that I just configured in the OPC client DI object. This assignment is made here in the PV input source field. Now, items added to the scan group under the OPC client object can be browsed and selected. To browse those items, I just need to click this ellipsis button here to the right. And you'll see that launches my Galaxy browser. And I can select my OPC DI object. And you'll see the item that I the item that I can just configured earlier is available for selection. So I'm going to highlight that and click OK. And you'll see my PV input source is now populated uh, with the item that I need for my PV input source. And now that that's been assigned, uh, I just need to save my analog device instance. So I'm going to go up here and click on the save icon. Again, I need to check in this, uh, the, the changes that I just made. I'm going to skip the comment and click OK. So now that my analog device instance is fully configured, it needs to be assigned under my area object. So I'm going to grab that, drag it down, and assign it to the area. And now I'm done. All of my objects have been configured. So, so now that all of my objects have been configured and assigned, the next step is to deploy my Galaxy so I can collect my simulated live data from OmniServer. So to do so, I just need to right-click on my Win Platform object and select Deploy. Now this is, this opens my deploy dialog box where I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the default settings um, to deploy all of the objects I've just configured. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK to start the deployment, and uh, we just gotta wait on the deployment to complete here. So now that the deployment is completed at 100%, I can go ahead and click the close button to proceed and view the data being collected. Now to do this, I need to open the object viewer and system platform. So I'm just going to go over to my deployment view, highlight my analog device instance, and I'm going to right click on that and select view and object viewer. And uh, that's going to launch the object viewer specifically populated with information about my specific, um, my specific object, which in this case is the analog device for my item. So if I scroll down here and find my PV PV input value, that's the one that I'm interested in. You can see good quality and an initial value here. Um, what I, I want to go ahead and subscribe to this so that I get changing values for this attribute. So if I right click on PV.input.value and select Add to Watch, you'll see that adds that adds the attribute to the watch window at the bottom of the viewer. Uh, which, as you can see, the values now started to update as value changes are received from OmniServer with timestamp and good quality and a status of OK. So if the item if the item is not added to the watch list, the item won't receive updates unless that actual attribute field is specifically clicked up in that top attribute view each time you want a value update. And that's it. Yeah, you can you can see you can see how straightforward it is to set up a simple OPC DA connection from System Platform to the Omni server, making it possible to integrate all of your other devices that aren't using a standard off-the-shelf protocol.